Hey guys, welcome back. Bass Monty's Garage. Got a good one this time. We're going to put cutouts in today, baby. That's right. Now, I have never really been fond of them until the most recent hype with supercars being straight piped. It's kind of loud, kind of interesting. And since I had the exhaust out for the transmission build, might as well eh, put them in, you know? Gives us the option. We can be straight piped or we can be muffled. Why not do both? So that's what we're going to do today. Uh, for those of you just joining us for the first time, uh, I did a Tremec rebuild and had to pull the exhaust out. And that's when I got the great idea. Since I had the interior out as well, um, I ran the wires already. Sorry, guys. <laughs> and so today we're going to do the weld-in version, which means cutting, grinding, welding, Lots of measuring. I think you have to measure once and cut three times, something like that. <laughs> I'm just kidding. So let's get into it. I'm going to show you what, what tools you need and or what I'm going to use. Again, I've never done this before, so I'm just flying by the seat of my pants. And this hooker setup doesn't have instructions. It's not, it can't be that hard. <laughs> be right back. So here's what comes with the hooker kit. Two of everything you see here. Basically, you have your actuator. It's a butterfly. Um, this killer looking specimen of TIG welding. Look at this. This is a spectacular. If I can get a quarter as nice a weld as they did here, I'd be happy. Same with on the extension. Look at this. Look at the TIG welding there. Oh my god. I don't know if a machine did that or not. This looks like a human. Anyway, it looks awesome. And I actually might even add more, more of a curvature on there. That's why this, this V-bend clamp is awesome, because you can just take it off and modify it at will. Man, spectacular. So two gaskets, the clamp, um, everything you need. It also comes with the wiring and a remote for opening and closing. So I think this remote is lame. Who's going to put it on a keychain or dig for it in your glove box? So I went with a manual switch. There is an upgrade to it. I'll talk about it later in this video. But for now, let's get to the tools and see what we have to do. What you're going to need are some basic tools and some advanced tools. Half inch and 9 16 wrenches. Straight edge and a sharpie. Grinder. And your preferred tool of choice for cutting tubular steel. You can use a hacksaw, which I don't recommend. You can use a sawzall, which would be f fun until you mess it up. I would prefer you use a bandsaw. Check this out. Bam! You like that? <laughs> this is my uh, tabletop bandsaw. I don't have room in my garage for, um, you know, a, a proper bandsaw. I'm at home. I'm in a small garage, small-ish for California. Um, this is a DeWalt pipe cutter that I adapted to convert to a tabletop bandsaw. And where I got this is called Swag Off-Road. I'll put a, a link in the description. This works for several different types of like Milwaukee, all kinds. But go to that website. It's really slick. And then you, when you're done, you take it out of your vise and you hang up on the wall. Pretty cool. So let's get under the car and see what angles we have to work with. Guys, here's the most difficult part, is figuring out where these should go. Because you need, at least for me, I need ground clearance. So, and you need a straight piece of pipe to basically cut into. So you can actually put them here. And this is on my system. This is a MagnaFlow exhaust. You might have a different system where you have more room uh, right behind the collectors. I'm thinking right here. I decided to use this section of pipe because that gives us some freedom, at least raises this point the highest off the ground versus going back in, in this region. So I took my straight edge and I picked the lowest point facing the ground and I drew a line because we need to figure out how to clock this when we put it when we weld it in. So the other thing to determine is where does this start? I'm going to start it right here. 
I'm gonna go ahead and do the same mark on, on the passenger side and then I'm gonna take this out so I'll meet you over by the workbench check this out so I was taking this apart just looking at it a little bit more in detail and how we determined that this needs to be level when hanging off the exhaust and I took that off the there's a flat edge on this adapter so I put it I put a fat allen wrench on there and rested it and so now it's sitting in our proper angle which is awesome so now we can actually take instead of using the bottom as the center we're going to use the top as our center line and you can eyeball it you can put some tape down and practice with your angles if you want um, frankly if you guys have a better way please post it in, in the description this is my first time I've never done it before so if you have a better way for others to follow Please chime in. Plan B. Check this out. So I'm flat on the on the table, and then here's my high point. So that's the top. I'm gonna do the same on the back. Using that right angle trick worked really good. So here's the matching exhaust. I love it. So I'm gonna go ahead and do the same thing. Like that. Just pick my points. Connect the dots, la la la, and then we'll figure out our length to cut. So I figured out another thing that might work is I used a ton of Sharpie right there. And I took my 90 degree, put my the flat end on the bench, 90 degrees with the, with the pipe, and then I just scraped it. I don't know if you can see it on video, but it actually left a nice mark. That's where I, how I made that line. I did the same thing on the other side. So now I'm going to go ahead and measure length and determine where our cut marks are. I pick my starting point, which is right here. It's basically an inch from this, I don't know if you can see this little band of, uh, looks like where the mandrel was gripping the pipe. Um, so an inch up and then nine and three quarters out to here. And before I start making my uh, perpendicular lines, we need to etch this with a center mark. And I'm using my, um, this is a center punch, but it actually serves as a good etching tool. The reason is, when we go to cut this, more than likely the, the Sharpie's going to disappear. So I don't know if you can see it. So I made an etch mark. I'm going to do the same etch mark on our matching pipe. And, th and then the same thing up here, because when we cut, lop this off, we need to know where to put it back on <laughs> and line it up. So I'm going to go ahead and etch this one, all four points, all the pipes, and then we'll get to the uh, cylindrical lines. Got my etch marks in, and we need to make a line around the pipe and also double check that we're symmetric around the pipe with that line. And so what I do is I cut a piece of paper off. doesn't matter if it's graph paper or not. I'm using the, the straight edge and just wrap it around. And then line up the edges, like making a paper airplane. And then tape it. So that's basically our cut mark. Now, I'm going to put a matching piece of tape around that whole line. Because the problem about putting tape around an object, it can turn on you. And you don't know if it's actually straight. So that's like our template. There you go, just like that. So now I have, I, I can move this. This is my cut line. Make sure you make an arrow that you know where to cut. I've done that before. That wasn't fun. Now that you wrapped your tape, time to do some quality control. Measure this side. So nine and three quarters. Turn it over. Measure the other side. It's over here. Nine and three quarters. So if you're measuring top and bottom is the same, that means your line is perfectly around the pipe. So we're ready to cut. Alright guys, let's see how we did. 
I'll line up my uh, my score marks if I can see them. So are we level? I can't tell. <laughs> I'm sure it's pretty good, but I'll review the tape. Next step though is to clean up all of our cut marks. So all the tubing we're going to be reusing, I have to clean up the outside and clean the inside, deburr it, and make sure it's level and flat. So this one is probably my worst cut. I got a little bump in there. So I just have to figure out how to shave it down. And then I'll mock them up and make sure we're close to where we started. So to get ready for welding, we need to clean up the outside, deburr it, and you want to get to a finish. It looks like that. So I'm going to do that all the way around. And then on the inside, I'm going to take my Dremel tool, the sandpaper, and I'm going to clean the inside to get the same result. Because when we TIG weld, we don't want any contaminants in our weld. I don't know about MIG welding. I'm not experienced with that, but it's probably similar. Do you want to get all our contaminants out? So I'm going to go ahead and do this for a while. That's what it should look like. So clean on the outside, clean on the inside, and you take acetone and get all the oil off. And then I'll go ahead and mock it up and see how it looks. All right, look at that. I like what I see. So I measured, um, originally, I didn't show you guys, there's a two inch um, elevation change from this level to this level. It's almost spot on. So the next step here is actually to put a tack weld on each one, and then you can actually manipulate it to the final adjustment. So we'll, I'll do a center to center measurement on the existing exhaust pipes. I know it's not accurate, but um, as long as in the right spot, as long as we're going straight back, and then I can finish welding. So this is awesome progress. Before I do the tack welding on our actual piece, you always want to do a sample because you want to set your amperage, get it right. So I tacked the two pieces we cut. And this is why you tack it because we can now move it a little bit so we can get it in the car after we tack it and see where our final placement is and if we need to make any adjustments we can do that before making this permanent <laughs> so i'm gonna go ahead and go ahead and do the same tack to the our setup and we'll go from there all right guys we're all tacked up so i'm gonna go ahead and throw it in the car and try not to bend anything <laughs> we'll see here we go guys Test fit works great. Everything fits perfectly. And I know that when I weld it together, I just have to make sure they're completely touching on both sides. So we're good. I'm going to take it out, finish all the welds, and put it back in. Oh, yeah. Look at that, boys and girls. It's all put together. All welded in. So next step is I'm going to go ahead and put it in the car. See how it looks. All right, guys. There it is. Woo! Looks awesome. Elevation looks great. Just as we planned it. So next step here is to uh, show you the electronics. And we have to test them before I obviously put them in and run the wires. The hooker electronic cutouts come with this a little accessory pack it's a remote control with a cigarette lighter adapter well two issues I have one is this isn't really practical you have to put it in the glove box or put in your keychain so hooker actually makes a switched version which I bought so somewhat racing has these I'll put the link down below so it has a switch that's momentary, like that. So you just go off means closed, on, and it goes all the way on. It doesn't stop halfway, which I like. So you just push it closed, it goes closed all the way. The other thing I don't like is cigarette lighter adapter. Obnoxious, right? So what I did, the other one comes with the same thing. I cut it off, and when you cut it off, you're going to have two wires a red and a black. Duh. So I used my 
wire my waterproof uh, solder connectors and I made a couple terminals because I'm going to share another shared source switch and a ground perfect so I'm going to put this in my center console um, I have the when I film this I actually have the tunnel torn apart for the Tremec rebuild so that's at the perfect time to put it in here's the ground to our switch and I wired the positive to a switch source this is actually my fuel pump switch that goes in the console here's our actuator set up all right so we should hit on and they should open yes off oh that's awesome so this is on the end of the actuator it plugs into this you have to drill a bigger hole for this one so i'm going to drill a hole to fit this guy which is basically three eighths so i'm going to drill that underneath uh the rear seat and then i'm going to run it through that hole like that into the passenger compartment well actually actually i drill the hole you should use pour 15 on the hole where you cut it so it doesn't rust and then we need to find a grommet because you don't want a bare a wire hanging out of a a hole you just cut in sheet metal because vibration will actually cut this wire and you have a short i like this one because it's um it's a smaller hole so what i'm going to do is i'm going to cut it and so underneath the car once we figure out our wire length I'm going to put it on the wire, see if I can jam this into the hole. If I can use this one, great, and then I'll use RTV in here. Once I figure out the wire length, we we'll use RTV, and it will obviously solidify and give us a nice waterproof connection, and we don't have to move this anywhere. Got the actuator up. It's loose right now, but I got the wire run to the hole beneath my rear seat and before I glue it down I want to make sure this works I know we did a bench test inside but I'm gonna go ahead and set this up so we can watch it hold on open sesame close sesame so eat okay so now that they're open I'm going to do my best just to line it up uh, just by feel on the inside. I don't think it's that critical, but while we're here, might as well make sure everything's kind of lined up the best we can. And then we can tighten it down. Last step here in our, inst well, second to last step is to put our band clamp on. Kind of leave it away from view from the outside. Like if you look this way, I don't want anyone to see this. So I'll just leave it there. And we put our turn down in. And now you can select what angle you want and tighten it down. And we are good to go. All right, guys, here we go. Uh, engine's already warmed up. I'm going to start it up. I don't know if you're going to be able to hear me after I start it up. And I'll give it a couple seconds at, at normal exhaust. I have another camera set up uh, in front of the rear wheel and we'll flick the switch and see how it sounds. Here we go. Okay, here it goes. Oh my gosh, this sounds amazing. And just so you guys know, I am not expecting performance enhancement here. I have MagnaFlow exhaust. It flows amazingly well. This is purely for the 
attention getting aspect and listening to the rumble the raw rumble of the engine 467 cubic inches sounds pretty cool when it's not muffled so if you see me at a show and you don't hear the noise right Monty open that switch <laughs> let me know I'd be happy to do it so I hope you guys got some good ideas today for your project I don't care what car you have I thought this was fun I haven't welded in a while Appreciate your patience, and until next time, build them fast, drive them faster. See ya.